السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد بإذن الله تعالى then this is a video in response to the video that was made by Ustad Asrar Rashid Hadahullah. In that video, he spoke about the differences between the Ash'aris and the Salafis in regards to creed. I myself watched his video live on Facebook until the question and answer session, where I asked him a question and then Alhamdulillah, he responded. However, I was not satisfied with the response. But that is something that bi ta'ala I aim to uh, address in this video, or should I say series of videos. Because these videos that I will do are a response. They are a response to what he mentioned in regards to the differences between Ash'aris and Salafis. Something that I thought that there were points that were incorrect that we can refute and reply to and that do not represent the Salafi position. I noted them down uh, on my papers here ala kulli hal, and I hope to go through them all. But I do not have the time to يعني, express fully on each point that I noted. But I will mention the key points ta'ala. This video as well is not one of those videos where a person says something and then a refutation or a reply comes out and then there's a counter reply even, even though I know that your Ustad will make a reply as I have met him in his house and we discussed this uh, before but I will not be responding to what he responds to in this video I will watch it and I will note down what the Ustad says and I will respond to that in another separate series of videos that be ta'ala, I wish to do clarifying the belief of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah as-Salafiyun in regards to Asma wa sifat So it is not like how some people wish it to be, an entertainment or a drama. And I am sorry to those who uh, wish to see that, يعني, because this is about ilm, this is about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a joke, as many people have made it out to be on the social media. That when a person says something, someone refutes, and then he refutes that, and then he refutes that, and it's a back and forth, and then you have these editings, and then the people in the comments, they get happy, and so on and so forth. That is not how I work. That is not how I do my da'wah. Wallahi alhamd. So I reiterate, this is not even a acceptance of any debate challenge as I have mentioned to the Ustad before when I went to his home and we spoke for a good number of hours that I said as for a debate then this should be done with our ulama with our scholars our ulama and they are kuthar walillah alhamd there are many of them yani for example I said to the Ustad that he is more than welcome to go to the Islamic University of Medina and bidnillahi ta'ala I will facilitate that insha'Allah that he visits one of our professors our teachers, of course, when this pandemic is over يعني, and the Umrah visa opens and then the university is able to يعني, teach as they normally do with the teachers in the university, the Ustad is more than welcome to go and sit with our mashayikh. And one that I mentioned specifically was a Sheikh Salih al-Sindi, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, who is a teacher at the, Isra at the Masjid of Nabawi, al-Sharif. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a teacher in Masjid al-Nabawi and he teaches Aqeedah and Fiqh and he teaches at the Islamic University of Medina and he is an expert in Aqeedah and an expert on Ash'arism and I told the Ustad that he's more than welcome to sit with him and debate him or discuss with him should he wish uh, The Ustad mentioned in his video that many of the students who graduate from the Islamic University of Medina they're not really knowledgeable or they don't have the uh, capacity to debate and so on and so forth, then I would disagree. I know many students, walillahi alhamd, who are graduates, who are magisters graduates, who are doctora aidan, well a handful of them, who are perfectly well and capable of sitting with the ustad and debating these issues. There are those who studied in Medina and left without graduating, who are very knowledgeable as well, 
who I know personally, mashallah, uh, who in fact one of them sat with me and we watched this together and we did critique, and I'm referring to the video of Ustad Asrar, we critiqued what he was mentioning. And of course, bidnillah, we will mention that uh, as these series continue. But as for a debate, yani for example, with myself or any other student, then as is known, uh, we Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah do not debate. We do not debate uh, people who are mukhalif, opposers to our aqeedah, don't hold the aqeedah of Ahl al-Sunnah, and that's what we believe for uh, Ustad Asrar, Adahullah, that he does not uh, hold the aqeedah to Salafiyyah, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Uh, but for debating and so on and so forth, this is for the senior tulab al-ilm and the ulama. Preferably the ulama. Why? Because they are more grounded in knowledge and more capable of responding to any shubahat. So I will mention some of the points in this video, uh, starting from the beginning of the video of Ustad Asrar Rashid Hadahullah. He mentioned that the Salafis, we call the Ash'aris Jahmiyyah. That we say the Ash'a'ira a Jahmiyyah. Now I spoke personally to the Ustad regarding this. And I said, look, the majority of Salafis, we do not say that you are Jahmiyyah. And he agreed. Rather, he was referring to a, a group of brothers who are Salafi. And they use this term for the Ash'aris on a particular website. That they call Ash'aris Jahmiyyah and so on and so forth. And this is wrong and so on and so forth. To which we say that, of course, they do not represent uh, all of Salafis. Just because a group of people from Salafis say something about Ash'aris or any other group does not mean that that's what the whole group believes in. I don't believe that the Ash'ara are Jahmiyyah because the Jahmiyyah had additional beliefs that the Ash'aris do not hold. But what we do say is that the Ash'ara that the usul that they bring have muwafaqa. They agree with the usul of the Jahmiyyah in certain aspects. That's what we say. Some ulama refer to the Ash'aris as makhanith al-Mu'tazila, for example, the effeminate ones from the Mu'tazila. Why? Because the Mu'tazila had certain principles and usul by which they would use to debate and prove the existence of Allah Azza wa and other attributes and whatnot. And the Ash'ara somewhat adopted them as well, those usul, but they were different, they tweaked them. In fact, the Ash'aris did refute the Mu'tazila on certain usul, but they also adopted certain aspects of their usul as well. Hence the term Makhanith al-Mu'tazila, that they are the effeminates of the Mu'tazila. They're not exactly hardcore like the Mu'tazila, but they resemble them nonetheless. So, to reiterate, not all Salafis accuse Ash'aris of being Jahmiyyah. Just because a faction or a group amongst us do, doesn't mean that's what we all believe. We call you Ash'aris. If it was that we believe that you are Jahmiyyah, we would have said the Jahmiyyah, who call themselves Ash'aris. La, we refer to you as Ash'aris. We refer to you as Ash'a'ira. But, however, the Ash'aris took from uh, these Tawa'if al kalamiyyah and resembled uh, the Jahmiyyah in certain of their statements, which we will expand upon uh, as this video or as the series of videos continues with Allah Ta'ala. Another point that I'd like to bring up is that many of the Ash'aris themselves accuse Ahl Sunnah of being Mushabbiha. Yani if this is about name calling and labeling, that we call you Jahmiyyah, even though we don't officially say that, a group amongst us might, but they don't represent us. Many Ash'aris, they call us Mujassima and Mushabbiha. They call us the people of Tajzim, that we are anthropomorphists. We liken Allah Azza wa to the creation. Do, do a faction of Ash'ari say that amongst you? Or do all of you say that? That's something that is for you to answer. So this issue of labeling, you call us Mujassima. And we are free from Tajzim. And rightly so, you might also say that we are free from Tajahum. We are free from the Usul of the, the, the Jahmiyyah. Of course, that is our Mahal al Niqash. That is what we are discussing in these series of videos. Not specifically, but just to touch upon them. Another point that was made by the Ustad was that the majority of the ulama are Ash'aris. Majority of the ulama are, were Ash'a'ira, wa ma turidiyya. And we say this is not correct. How can it be? Yes, there were a lot of ulama who were Ash'a'ira and ma turidiyya. We don't deny that. But were they the majority? This is a uh, point that many of the later Ash'aris they bring, that they say we are the majority. 
We have always been the majority. And that is not really the case. What about before the advent of Abu Hassan al Ash'ari and Abu Mansur al Maturidi? Rahimahumullah. What about them? Before them, what were the people upon then? Were they upon the exact same creed? You look at the Turath, the heritage of the Ash'ari creed from all of the centuries, their works and what they believe in and so on and so forth. Do you find such language, such explanation before Abu Hassan al Ash'ari? No. And that is what uh, we make in regards to this point. What, would, what did the ulama before Abu Hassan al Ash'ari believe in? Of course, it wasn't Ash'arism because he came towards the end of the second century or so. Third century, ala kulli hal. But what did they believe before him? What was the creed of Ahmed and Malik and Shafi'i rahimahumullah jama'in? Did they believe the exact same thing? No. The ulama at their times, there was hundreds and thousands of ulama before Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari. You're talking about a good 200 years full of people, Muslimin, ulama, muhaddithin. If you read their works, read the early works of the Salaf, you do not find that creed within their works. You find the opposite. So this claim that the Ash'aris are the majority or they're always the majority is false. It's not true. And the Ustad mentioned in his video in regards to how uh, they say, that we say that it was politically driven. And this is something that is not يعني, غريب. This is not something that is uh, strange. Of course, any political power that has power in the land and they hold a certain creed or ideology, they're going to spread that creed and ideology. Just like you would say, for example, Saudi Arabia, the heads are who? Of course, you're going to say Wahhabi. We don't use the word Wahhabi, but they're Salafi in their Aqidah. So naturally they're going to spread that creed. And that's what we say regarding the Ash'ari, Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Was he not an Ash'ari? When he conquered and he went out, he also spread the Ash'ari madhab. So this is something that is not يعني, mustahil. يعني, the, 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 Ash, the Ash'aris were not present. They were not the majority in certain lands, such as Sham and Egypt and uh, Yemen. Uh, they were not, and the Hijaz, they were not ma the majority at the time. They were in fact the minority. Yani the belief that they held was not shared by many of the ulama of the different lands at that time. Al-Maghrib, for example, in, in, in Morocco, northern Africa, did they hold the Ash'ari creed? No, they never. This is a point of history and fact that of course I believe the Ustad would, uh, would contend to. He would not agree with me on this. But that is something that we can mention further on in... Uh, future uh, talks ala kulli hal or responses. One example of that is, and of course the stad he mentioned, Ibn Asakir who was a Shari, he wrote a book called Tabiyin Kadib al-Muftari, the one who, يعني, a refutation of somebody who ascribed things to Abul Hassan al-Ash'ari. And there is a counter refutation to that book known as Jam' al-Jiyush wa'd-Dasakir ala Ibn Asakir. By who? Ibn al-Mibrad Al-Hanbali, Jamal al-Din ibn Yusuf al-Dimishqi al-Hanbali rahimahullah who died in the 9th century after the Hijrah, 9th century, okay? He wrote a refutation to that book and within this book he expresses the claims of the Ash'aris and he refutes them saying how can they be the majority or claim that they're majority? He refutes the, Ash uh, the Ash'aris and he brings more than 400 ulama, close to three to 400 ulama he says himself in his book that I am going to mention the ulama from that time of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari up until our time, my time, and that was the 9th century. And he mentioned all of the ulama up to nearly 400 or more who were against the Ash'ari, did not hold the belief of the Ash'ari. 400 between the space of the second century, third century and 9th. So how can it be said that it was the Ash'ari Madhab that was the dominant Madhab of the time and so on and so forth. Yes, they gradually became يعني, uh, to increase in number, but in the first affair of them, of themselves, they were not the majority. There were ulama in each century who were against them and that was recorded by Ibn Mibrad al-Hanbali in his book Jam' al-Jayush with the Sakir ala Ibn Asakir. And of course, again, there might be a response to this, but we don't really look at responses. It's not that, oh, somebody said something and then there's a response and then there's a counter response and then a response. A response يعني, doesn't mean that خلاص, this person is bound the truth or whatever the case is, no. 
Rather, what concerns us is facts. Yani facts, things which are true and that can be proven to be true. As long as someone has evidence and facts and he can back that up and he can demonstrate that, then that is what yani, is, uh, that's what we believe in and that's what we look towards. Like, can you prove what you are saying basically? And this is what we're trying to do here right now, inshallah. That the Ash'aris were not the majority. They did increase in number, vast in number afterwards. But that was only because of the Futuhat of, of Salah al-Din al-Ayubi uh, and the political atmosphere at the time. Because they, like we mentioned before, they did not have any pres- uh, presence in Sham and Misr and Hijaz and Yemen. Their belief certainly. It was rather the beliefs of the Ahl al-Hadith, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And that's something that we're going to touch upon, uh, inshaAllah, shortly. So we ask a question that if Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari, rahimahullah ta'ala, was upon the haqq, when he refuted the Mu'tazila. Do we see that same style of refutation from the works of the Salaf? You have to understand, the Mu'tazila was there since the time of uh, Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala. In the early days, they had an existence before Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, and they had their bid'ah and their misguidance. But how did the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah refute them? How did the Ahlul Hadith, before Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, refute the Mu'tazila? Was it the same way? Was it different? Of course it was different. It was by way of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not this Ilm al-Kalam rhetoric that many of uh, the Ash'aris adopted later on. And that's something that we're going to mention on bi Ta'ala also. And everything that I am saying can be backed up by evidence and can be backed up by history itself. Like this point for example. Find us a work before the advent of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari by the ulama of the Salaf, Rahimahumullah, Ahl al-Hadith, uh, the Muhaddithin, the likes of Bukhari and Shafi'i and other than them, Rahimahumullah, where they refuted the Mu'tazila in the way that the later Ash'aris do. They refuted them with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. They did not use Ilm al-Kalam. And of course, the, third, uh, the Ustad, he mentioned that there is يعني, Ilm al-Kalam pertaining to the Mu'tazila and Sunni Ilm al-Kalam and so on and so forth, even though we don't agree that there is a, such a thing called a Sunni uh, Kalam. But we're going to mention that in the uh, upcoming uh, response, inshaAllah. But just to say, يعني, what did they believe? These are questions that you must ask yourself. What did the early Salaf believe? What was written in their books of creed? Is it the same as the, the Ash'aris who came after? What was the style of refutation? What was the language that was used? All of these questions must be asked. And when you investigate yourself, for those who have the capability of investigating and going back to the sources, you will see the reality and the truth of these affairs. So we mention as well that the Ahl al-Hadith, they were the majority in fact. Uh, for example, Abu Nasr, one example, Abu Nasr al-Sijzi, who died in the year 444, rahimahumullah, he wrote a book upon the one who made inkar of the Haraf and Sawt. And within there he mentioned that the ulama, the majority of them were who? The Ahl al-Hadith. Those who are upon the mother of the Salaf, not Ash'arism. In fact, he used to refute himself the Ash'aris, rahimahumullah ta'ala, 444 after the Hijrah, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the early days. And one who looks at the works of the Salaf, and he looks at the i'tiqad of Sunnah, uh, mathalan by uh, the Ar-Raziyain, rahimahumullah, or Kitab al-Sunnah by Imam Ahmad Sun, which of course the Ustad, he uh, disputes, we should mention as well, uh, later on. The Sharh Usul i'tiqad ahl al-Sunnah by al uh, likewise, the works of Abu Bakr al-Ismaili, al-Sunnah, and these works, al-Sunnah by al-Karimani, and all these other works of Sunnah by the ulama, al-Sabuni, i'tiqad ahl al-Sunnah, wa ashab al-Hadith. All of these works, the books of Sunnah, written by these great Imams, al-Muzani and other than them, read them. They're translated into English. Look at what they said. Get their books before Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari. Their books are printed in English and you can read them. And they are actual manuscripts, they are their books. Nobody disagrees, it's their books. You will see the stark difference between the beliefs of the early Salaf and the Ash'aris and those who came after them. You will not find their creed in these early works. And when they cited, when the ulama of the Salaf, rahimahumullah, cited the Mu'taqad and the belief, they would say that this is ijma'. They would say this is absolute consensus. That whatever we mention right now, Bukhari rahimahullah, it's khalq af'al al-ibad. Ijma' I'tiqad al-Sunnah uh, by uh, the, the Raziyain Ijma' All of it 
ابو بكر المزني ابو بكر الاسماعيلي رحمه الله في كتاب السنه لايكويز المزني ان هيز بوك اعتقاد في السنه دي منشن ذات ذيس از وات اهل الحديث بليف ان السمعاني ان هيز بوك از ويل جزء في انتصار اهل الحديث هي منشن ذيس ايرلي ووركس فروم ذا ثيرد سكند اند ثيرد سنتريز وير ذي منشن ذات ذيس از اجماع ذيس از ا بوينت اوف كونسنسس ان ريجاردز تو كريد اند بليف اند ذا كريد اند ذا بليف هيلد ويذن ذيس بوكس ار نوت ذا كريد اند ذا بليفز اوف ذا اشاعره or those who came after and this is the fact that we want to address and perhaps we can go through those books in another video bi idhnillahi ta'ala likewise uh, upon that point as well they themselves they testify that this creed was the majority for example imam al bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he says i met more than a thousand ulama and they all say that the belief was x y and z and within it you find beliefs contrary to the beliefs of the ashaira For example, the Raziyain, Abu Hatim and Abu Zur'a al-Razi, rahimahum Allah ta'ala, in their work of creed, but that was transmitted by Abu Hatim al-Razi, uh, by uh, uh, Abu Abdurrahman, the son of Abu Hatim al-Razi, rahimahum Allah. He mentions that this is ijma' from all of the ulama, from Iraq and Hijaz and Sham and Yemen. And they mention, for example, that Allah Azza wa Jal is above the throne, and that Iman is qawl and amal, and... يزيد وينقص and the علم الكلام is مذموم blameworthy ولا يفلح صاحب كلام أبدا for example they used to say all of this is against the creed of the أشاعرة but of course the أستاذ he, the أستاذ he mentions that no that what they meant by uh, كلام was the معتزل كلام but that's your inference that's you reading into the text that's your assumption and a lot of the discourse that happens between ash'aris and salafis is down to uh, this assumption that many uh, ash'aris might have they just assume that they were the majority or that they just assume that they are upon the truth or that they assume that you know history was like this and that it can't be contested or refuted of course it can it can be questioned it can be contested and refuted and it has been done so it has been done it has been yani, these shubahat and these claims that the ash'ara they make have been re- responded to by early ulama classical ulama and then those who come afterwards even till our present day today nonetheless the ustad he mentioned also that, that that we the salafis we call ash'ara philosophers that we say that you are falasifa i've never heard any one of our ulama ever say that you are falasifa or that you are philosophers I've never heard any of the early Salaf rahimahumullah say that you are philosophers or even those who refute the Ash'aris from the ulama of the past from the classical ulama they never even said that you are philosopher perhaps yes you might have adopted some principles from them or you agree with them in certain aspects and issues but to say that you are philosopher you are philosophers and that we call you philosophers then this is far from the truth Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was just in his refutation against the Tawa'if al kalamiyyah and Bid'iyyah. He was just in his refutation of the people of Bid'ah. Even he did not say that the Ash'ar were philosophers. Perhaps that they adopted some principles, that they agreed with them in some areas of creed and so on and so forth, or in their logic or whatever the case is. But till this day I have not heard anyone saying that you are philosophers, that you are philosophers. We say you're mutakallimeen. And that's what you are and that's what you yourself say that you are. From the points that the Ustad mentioned in his video early on, he said that the Salafi movement liken Allah to the creation. And this is something that is not يعني, new. This accusation against Ahl Sunnah was known even in the time of the Salaf. The books that I mentioned just moments ago, they mention that the alamat or the, 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 the signs of the people of Bid'ah against Ahl Sunnah is that they call Ahl Sunnah Mushabbiha. This is what the Abu Hatim and Abu, uh, Abu, Hatim and Abu Zur'a al-Raziyain Rahimahumullah mentioned in their work of creed that the sign of Ahl al-Bid'ah is calling Ahl al-Sunnah Mushabbiha. That you call Ahl al-Sunnah Mushabbiha. Imam Tirmidhi Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentions in his Sunan and this is something that we can cite inshallah in the future. Imam Tirmidhi Rahimahullah mentions that the Jahmiya in regards to these ayat and a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven and that Allah azza wa created Adam with his hand and so on and so forth Imam Tirmidhi says وَتَأَوَّلَتُ الْجَهْمِيَّةِ هَذِهِ الْحَدِيثِ The Jahmiyyah made ta'wil of these hadith So ta'wil comes from who? The Jahmiyyah Ash'aris make ta'wil as well, don't they? 
I'm not saying that the same. I'm saying look where you have taken from. And look at the manhaj of At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah compared to your manhaj. Nonetheless, he said the Jahmiya make ta'wil of these sifat and they say the hand of Allah is the power of Allah. And of course, the response would be to this is that when well, Ash'aris don't say that ta'wil, yani this is the ta'wil, but it could be. Yahtamil an yakun. It might be this. The difference between us and the Jahmiya is that the Jahmiya said for certain the hand of Allah is power. We don't say that. We say it could be power or it could be this or it could be that. That's the response that the Ash'aris give. And it's not a sufficient response. It's not sufficient. What was the qasd of Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah? He said that's what the Jahmiya do. They make ta'wil, whether it's definitely yani, this ta'wil or not. Ta'wil is not from the madhab of the Salaf rahimahullah. Tirmidhi rahimahullah mentions that they make ta'wil, the Jahmiya. Okay? Then Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah said that the Jahmiya say regarding these ahadith, that Allah descends and so on and so forth, that it is tashbih. Who says that? The Jahmiya. The Jahmiya accuse Ahl Sunnah of tashbih. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah says this. Uh, Abu Hatim and Abu Zur al-Razi rahimahullah said that. Many of the ulama of the Salaf that we can cite, and inshallah we will in the future, we will cite where they themselves, they said that the sign of the people of Bid'ah is that they call Ahl Sunnah Mushabbiha. And this is not something that is new. From their time until today, they accused Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah of being a Mushabbih. And I believe, if my memory says me correct, that when I sat with the Ustad in his house, we mentioned Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah briefly, and I think he also said that he does not seem to be a Mujassim, an anthropomorphist. Uh, my memory hopefully serves me correct. If I'm wrong, then please let us know. But from what I remember is that he said that he does not seem to be a mushabbih. <coughs> Even though many of the ulama, they said, of course, Ash'ari ulama, he said that they declared to be a mushabbih and so on and so forth. And that was something famous. But Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, along with the Salafis today, we are free from this claim of tajzim. What is tashbih? In fact, Ishaq bin Rahawi, Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah, in the same passage, he cites the statement of Imam Ishaq bin Rahawi rahimahullah, where he says, إِنَّمَا تَشْبِيهُ أَنْ يَقُولْ يَدٌ كَيَدٍ Tashbih is that you say hand like this hand. That is the dhabit. أو سَمْعٌ كَسَمْعٍ أو مِثْلُ سَمْعٍ To say hearing like this hearing. Or this hearing, the hearing of Allah, is similar to the hearing of so on and so forth. This is tashbih. This is what actual tajzim and tashbih is, according to the statement of Ishaq ibn Rahway rahimahullah, who Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah cited. And such statements, the definition of tashbih, according to the Salaf, we can prove and provide, not just him but others as well, where they said that tashbih is to say, if the hand like this hand, or hand similar to that hand, and walillahi alhamd, ahl sunnah Ibn Taymiyyah, the Salafis of today, never ever do we say the hand of Allah is like the human hand. Billah. We never say the hand of Allah is similar to a human hand. Billah. No. And this brings me to another uh, point where the Ustad, he mentioned that uh, we say regarding the hand of Allah, he said, is this a physical hand or not? And he said that, يعني, we say that Allah has limbs, for example. A'udhu Billah. Ask any Salafi who has studied even a little bit in regards to Bab al-Asma wa Sifat. Do you believe Allah has limbs? They will say no. We're not taught that. We believe that is tajzim. That's tashbih. To say Allah has limbs, none of our ulama qatibatan ever said that. Jawarih, none of them. Or a jariha, no. We negate that. In front uh, for Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is something I mentioned to Ustad in his home. We don't say that. Nobody said that. And he mentioned something about uh, Shaykh Khalil uh, Harras rahimahullah. And we're going to mention that in the, few, in the, in the upcoming response, bi ta'ala. But Salafis, Ahl Sunnah, we don't say Allah has limbs or that Allah resembles the creation. That's not our belief and our creed. In short, and I will expand upon this again in other videos, inshallah. The creed and the belief of Ahl Sunnah Salafiyun is that we believe in the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal, just like Allah revealed it. That just like the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam told us, informed us about his Lord upon the apparent meaning. And as for the how, the kayfiyah, we leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know. That is our belief. 
The apparent meaning of the sifat of Allah does not equal limbs. It does not equal resemblance to the creation. Why? Because laysa kamithlihi shay. Any Muslim will tell you that Allah does not resemble his creation. Yani even badihiyan, logically speaking. Do, would a Muslim ever say Allah is like his creation? Even though he believes his Lord hears and sees and so on and so forth. Is he like the creation in those aspects? No. Likewise in other sifat as well. And I'm going to mention more upon this point. How we believe in the sifat and asma of Allah Azza wa Jal. But I won't express that now. But just to refute that point that we say that Allah liken, that the Salafis liken Allah to the creation. Then that is something that is false and wrong. And a tuhma and an accusation and a slander. And to that we say, Subhanaka hadha buhtanun azim. Glory be to you, O oh Allah. This is certainly a slander. So the Ustad, he mentioned that the Yad of Allah, yani the, the, the ayah in the Quran, Yad Allah, Fawqa Aidihim, and so on and so forth. So then he said, does this mean a physical hand or not? To which we reply, we don't use such words like physical, physicality, and so on and so forth. These are words which are innovated. And Ahl Sunnah have a certain manhaj in regards to these words. These words such as يعني, uh, physical, are these attributes physical? If you mean haqiqatan, and of course haqiqatan is not uh, what we mentioned in Ustad uh, Asrar's house when I said regarding Allah's hand, we believe it haqiqatan. He said, what do you mean haqiqatan? This is ilm al-kalam. This is not ilm al-kalam. Haqiqatan meaning the opposite of majaz. Majaz is something of course that is metaphorical in meaning. But we don't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sifat are metaphorical. We say haqiqatan in reality. But as for the word physical, now we don't use that because that delves into the kayf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the kayf, how Allah azza wa jal is. And of course, we do not know how Allah azza wa jal is. And we're going to also expand upon them, what we mean by kayf and so on and so forth. But this certain terminology, like limiting Allah, had and makan and place and time and so on and so forth, Hudud and Ghayat and whatnot, Jiha, direction. These are Al-Fadh Al-Mubtada'a. These are words that are innovated. And the manhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that we do not affirm these words for Allah and we don't negate them for Allah. Rather, what do we do is that we make istifsar. We ask you, what do you mean by place? What do you mean by time? What do you mean by direction? And what do you mean by يعني, uh, hayyiz and so on and so forth. What do you mean by these words? With the exception of one, uh, but that's a different issue. However, these words were not used by the Salaf rahimahumullah. These are words that were innovated by the mutakallimin that came afterwards when referring to Allah Azza wa Jal and the creed in Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah can't be contained by time and space and Allah is not restricted by direction and so on and so forth. And that methodology led them to denying the sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, I mentioned this to this ustad. He says, we don't deny the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal, but that is something that of course we disagree and differ in. It can be definitely said the way we believe in these sifat uh, are not the way the Salaf rahimahullah believed them as you do. But nonetheless, such words such as, do you believe that these hands are physical or that Allah is in a place or limited and so on and so forth? We don't affirm, we don't deny. We ask you, what do you intend by them? Do you intend by them that Allah is restricted by the creation? No, we don't. Do we intend by it that Allah Azza wa for example, is above the Arsh? Yes, we do, because that is what the revelation speaks with. And when we say Allah is above the Arsh, we don't mean that He is mahdud by His creation. That, that belief that Allah is above the Arsh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed in the Quran, doesn't equal that He is contained by the creation. This is an assumption, again, on part of the Ash'aris. And these assumptions that the Ash'ara have, and Mutakallimeen have, using these words, like space and time and direction and so on and so forth, their assumptions to these words, the, 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 the result thereof is, of course, um, the accusation against Ahl Sunnah that we liken Allah to the creation, for example. We don't use the words that you use. We don't use these terminologies like the Ash'aris and the later Ash'aris especially used. We stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, the way the Salaf rahimahumullah understood it, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Atba'a Tabi'een. They said Allah was above the Arsh, we say Allah is above the Arsh. We don't believe Allah is contained by the creation, no, we don't. Allah is separate and distinct, He is ba'inun min khalqihi, jalla wa ala. So that's what we say in regards to that, and we can expand upon that, bi ta'ala, in future uh, sessions. 
But one question that I wanted to ask the Ustad was, where did the Salaf make ta'wil? And he did in his uh, video mention some uh, narrations. Of course, this was earlier on the video, but we will respond to those so-called narrations where the Salaf rahimahumullah made this ta'wil, supposed ta'wil of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's a question that you yourselves, the viewers, can ask. Did the Salaf really make ta'wil? Read the early works, read the books, read the books of hadith, read the books before Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari and see if you can find where any of the Salaf made ta'wil. Yes, you'll be able to find narrations يعني, that were cited by Bayhaqi, for example, or other later Ash'aris, or even at the time of Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari and just after, you will find certain narrations. But were they true? Do, you have, do they have an isnad going all the way back to the Salaf, the one who said it? Rahimahumullah. Where did they come from? What was their intent? And so on and so forth. You won't find the Salaf rahimahullah, making ta'wil. You will find certain examples where it seems as if they are, but they are actually not. And they're talking about something else. And of course, we can mention that in later uh, videos. But did the Salaf rahimahullah, make ta'wil? No, they did not. They did not. And as for what the Ustad mentioned from some of the Salaf making ta'wil and some narrations from Imam Ahmad and other than that, then we will address that further on bi ta'ala. The Ustad, he made a good point. He said that no scholar is ma'asum. They make slip-ups. They have major errors. And that can occur. <coughs> to which we say, Jazakumullahu khair. Thank you very much. And that's what we've been saying all along as well. But when we say it, we're accused of hating the imams, hating the scholars, not believing in what the early uh, ulama believed in and so on and so forth, as if they were ma'asum. Because that's how some, not all, some Ash'aris, and I'd say a lot of Ash'aris who are not as well trained in their Ash'arism or in history and aqeedah, they make this claim that you attack the early Ash'ar and so on and so forth. Even though it's a legitimate mistake that we, we, we might cite, not that it's from ourselves, but from the ulama of the past when they cited the mistakes of the Ash'ar and these ulama, that we are accused of hating them or not respecting them and so on and so forth. But just like Ustad himself said, and I appreciate he said it, that no scholar is ma'asum. They make slip ups and that they have major errors and that can occur. And that is what we are talking about here. What are these split uh, slip ups? What are these major mistakes and problems? Because they are major mistakes and problems that uh, the Ash'ari ulama fell into. And that one which the Salafi rahimahumullah ulama mentioned present day and in the past as well, nonetheless. When you compare the two creeds, the actual creed of the Salaf and the creed of the Sha'ar on those who came after. Then the Ustad, he mentioned, he started to speak more about Abdul Rahman Hassan. Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the debate, uh, not to swerve uh, this video to something else, but that debate between the Ustad. Uh, Asrar Hadahullah and Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan Hafidhullah Ta'ala uh, which was lasted for about four hours on Istighatha was a debate that I watched myself personally and it was a good debate Walillah Alhamd and of course some, some of you might say I'm being biased but of course the Hujjah was, was with our Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan Hafidhullah Ta'ala I guarantee 90% of the people who watched that video did not understand what was being said especially when you look at the comments of the people commenting 90% of them do not understand what went on. And when I say 90%, I don't just mean Ash'aris, I mean Salafi brothers as well. Salafi brothers as well didn't even understand what was going on in that debate. And how, I do, how do I know that? Because when I speak to some Ash'ar, when I speak to some Salafi brothers or some Salafi brothers, when they ask me questions regarding that debate, they were saying, well, why did he say this? Or why was, he, why was he saying that? And there were such easy questions and questions that يعني, SubhanAllah showed that the person, this brother, whether he's Salafi or not, but I was dealing with Salafi brothers, that they didn't understand what was being said in that debate. It went over their heads. And more so from the, 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 the Sufi or Brailwi, if you want to say, Ash'ari camp. It went over their heads as well. 90% of them did not understand what was going on in that debate. Because when I converse and speak with them, they fail to understand our points and they fail to understand what was actually being said. But nonetheless, nonetheless, that's my... Uh, two cents of uh, commentary on that uh, fantastic debate. He mentioned that there is no coherent definition of shirk. Yani Salafis, we don't have a coherent definition of shirk. 
And this couldn't be further from the truth. Our definition of shirk, even though it's expressed in different ways, targeted at certain beliefs, in its essence, it is one. I'll give you one coherent definition of shirk. تَسْوِيَةُ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِاللَّهِ فِي مَا هُوَ مِنْ خَصَائِسِ اللَّهِ There you go. It is to equate other than Allah Azza wa Jal with Allah Azza wa Jal in that which is only specific for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That is a coherent definition of shirk that all our ulama, if you read our works, the, the works of our ulama and our teachers, past and present, they, mem- they, they mention this definition of shirk. Not exactly, this phrase is also found too, but it revolves around such a statement. And they are synonymous. They might be expressed in different ways, but they are synonymous. Taswiyatu ghayrillah, billah, fima huwa min khasaisillah. Equating other than Allah with Allah in that which is only for Allah is shirk. Likewise, sarf al ibadah li ghayrillah, shirk. Directing acts of worship to other than Allah is shirk. These are synonymous because an act of worship is from the khasais of Allah. An act of worship is from that which only Allah Azza wa Jal is due. Of course, from worship. So to direct that to other than Allah is shirk. And of course, these definitions of shirk that are found in the works of our ulama are coherent, they are synonymous, and they refer to the same thing when, person, when a person is precise in their meanings nonetheless and understands what they are saying. Then the Ustad, he mentioned that the three types of tawheed, they are not coherent. And this is something that, of course, the ulama of the past have been mentioning uh, and defending before Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, Ya'ani, for example, Ibn Batta al-Akbari, al-Hanbali rahimahullahu ta'ala, who died in the year, the, the end of the year, I think 370-380 Hijri, in the third, end of the fourth, uh, end of the, ya'ani, the fourth century, the end of the year 380, rahimahullah. In his works, he mentions, and I believe in his Ibana, al-Ibana al-Kubara, hundreds of years before Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions these three types of Tawheed. He mentions Allah's Rububiyyah, his Rabbaniyyah, and Allah Azza wa Jal's istihqaq lil ibadah and uluhiyah and his asma wa sifat ibn batta al akbari and of course i didn't write down the reference perhaps i can do a separate series on the three types of tawheed with the evidence and so on and so forth but the salaf rahimahullah did believe in these three types of tawheed perhaps not the way it was expressed by later scholars but the concept is there the concept is found in the works of imam tabari rahimahullah Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi himself, when he mentions Wahdaniyyah and Rububiyyah and so on and so forth. Yani these three types of Tawheed and this claim was old that Ibn Taymiyyah came with. Of course he didn't. I just said Ibn, uh, Ibn al-Batta al-Akbari, uh, 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 he mentioned in his Al-Ibana, these three types of Tawheed. And we'll cite that, inshallah, in another video perhaps on the three types of Tawheed. But it's not a bid'ah like people, they make out to be or say or claim falsely. No. These three types of Tawheed are found consistently within the Qur'an and the Sunnah. It's a concept found within the Qur'an and the Sunnah. It's not something new. When you read from Surah Al-Fatiha all the way to Surah Al-Nas, these three types of Tawheed always occur. And Allah Azza wa Jalla always refers to and mentions. So it's not something that is, يعني, like the Ustad said, that it's not coherent. Of course it's a coherent. It's found in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. But a person might ask, well, what about some of you Salafis, they say there's something called Tawheed al-Hakimiyyah. And there can be something called Tawheed this and Tawheed that. Al-Hakimiyyah falls under Rububiyya and Uluhiyya, as we will say. It's not a separate category. That's only a small difference of opinion in regards to categorization. See, categorization is something that scholars have been doing all along in Islamic history. The word Fard, Sunan, Nawafil. Where do you think they came from? The Salaf? (laughs) These are concepts, concepts found in the Quran and the Sunnah where scholars have expressed them in these categorizations. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is no, like the, the, the fuqaha they mentioned, there is no harm in istalahat. You have a mustalah referring to a concept in the Quran and the Sunnah. As long as that mustalah makes sense, and that concept is found in the Quran and the Sunnah, wilil alhamd, there is no problem in that. Using that concept, or so, using that categorization to refer to that concept. So the three types of tawheed are found in the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha <coughs> contains the three types of tawheed. And just for those people who are thinking, why am I coughing so much? This room is a bit dusty. I haven't got COVID. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from it. Ameen. But nonetheless, in reference to uh, the three types of tawheed, Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. 
All praise is due to Allah, Lord of all creation. This is a rububiyyah. Allah says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm din The most merciful, the specifically merciful. This is what the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, owner of the day of resurrection. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. This is uluhiyya and ibadah. In Fatiha, in Surah An-Nas, and all other surahs of the Quran and the ayat of the Quran, express and refer to Allah's Lordship, His worship, and His names and His attributes. And anything, yani, uh, apart from that, revolves around these three types of Tawheed, like Hakimiyyah. It revolves around the Lordship and the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. So all that which Allah Azza wa Jal refers to Himself in the Quran goes back to one of these three categories. That's it. How is that, not, how is that incoherent? I don't understand. Nonetheless, that is something that uh, they were saying in the time of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah that he yani, came with this bid'ah, wa'iyadun billah. Uh, but it's not a bid'ah. Why? Because it has its roots in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But nonetheless, uh, there are much things to be mentioned. There are many other points that can be mentioned, inshallah, and we will mention them in another part series of this response to the Ustad, hadahullah. And insha'Allah, we will continue that further on. Uh, but I'd like to stress again that this is not one of those videos that are for entertainment or that we are going to make a drama out of like many people do on the social media. It's only an explanation and a response to what the Ustad mentioned and the points that I mentioned here uh, for those Salafis who asked and for those Ash'aris who do not know our position. ta'ala in the future, I plan to make a series uh, re- uh, explaining the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in regards to Asma wa Sifat. Um, I'm not from those people who have this back and forth, but I don't have the time. I really do not have the time to have or engage in a back and forth. I will, uh, and I look forward to the response of the Ustad. I won't be responding to what he uh, mentions, even though I will note it down and mention them in my lessons um, teaching the Aqeedah of the Salaf. Naktafi bihad al Qadr, wallahu a'lam. Whatever was said, uh, that which is correct, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that which I said from a mistake, then it's from me and shaitan. And we ask Allah azza wa jal to guide us all and grant us tawfiq. Allahumma ameen. And we ask Allah azza wa jal to show us the truth when it is apparent. And we ask Allah azza wa jal to keep us away from the falsehood when it is apparent. Allahumma ameen. Allahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.